Hello guys and thank you for joining me yet again. My name is Eugen and today I wanted to share with you one of my favorite fountain pens, uh, the Ackerman pens. Hopefully I got the name right. I have promised this review for a while and I finally got to it. Um, fair warning, this video will probably end up being longer than uh, what I usually do, not that it, they are any shorter only because uh, there are a lot of things to talk about and while I will not be able to cover everything I'll try to cover at least the basics uh, based on the pens that I have. On my previous video the Lorelei vs Blue Do and Osprey fountain pens um, I mentioned that while these fountain pens are fairly simple I do not think um, they are a great start and a starting fountain pen. If you are just dipping your toes into the world of fountain pens, you might want to give this one a pass, for now at least. You kind of have to be comfortable with getting your fingers a little bit dirty, swapping nibs, using silicone grease, cleaning the pens, and so on. Um, basically, these fountain pens, from what I've noticed, they are targeting mostly um, artists. Not that I am one of the uh, one of them, but I do really enjoy these pens because I like uh, the flex nibs that you can use for them. Basically, these fountain pens are targeting uh, people that enjoy doing calligraphy uh, with a deep style nib, and um, also people that enjoy doing ink sketch drawings and uh, so on by using. Uh, Genies, for example, right? So, again, not really a starter pen. And if this is something they're interested in, as in using uh, untipped nibs and flexible nibs, uh, probably an easier start to actually go with uh, a deep style set for, uh, for ink before going into this because they will require a little bit more more work than something that you just dip in and one and we know it's just clean up this is a little bit more complicated um so that with that aside uh ackerman pens basically they have three main ca category they have a classic uh a pump and a newer entry which uh, it's called basic i only own two of uh, the the pens that they have which is basically the basic and three of their classic uh, fountain pens i do not have a uh, pump pen but i'm gonna show it here on the screen basically it has like a, sm uh, a small bladder i believe it's called or I guess that's why it's a pump because you press on that bladder and uh, that helps you deliver more ink depending on the situation you're in so if you let's say you make a extremely long line with your nib flex to its uh, limits you want to make sure that you get a constant flow of ink and that uh, bladder or pump will allow you to basically squeeze ink as you need to that probably requires a little bit more de uh, de dexterity than using uh, one of these uh, normal pens um, that's why i didn't got one i wanted to first of all get comfortable using these pens and if i ever needed one i could have upgraded i still don't need one but i'm actually really curious on how that works so probably eventually i will end up going uh, uh going buying one sorry anyway so going back to the pens that i have the basic pen if you look on their website it only has one options basically you have the pen it is advertised as an eyedropper only and uh, you choose whatever nib you want uh, you'll see their uh, their nib options are something like uh, the manga G nibs, uh, as in you know, Jiko, Nico G, Zebra G. Uh, you can also use principal nibs uh, with these Hunt or even the um, Hawk quill nibs, as far as I remember. But uh, but 
what else? I think you also have the Gilo name and the browser host names. So you can use a multitude, multitude of uh, names with these pens. Oh, and one of them that it's actually my favorite and I have on, on one of my pens, these sketch names. Anyway, so basic pen, choice of what type of feed you want and what type of uh, basically um, nib you want. With the other pens, the uh, classic ones and the pump one, you have the options to choose uh, a normal pen or an overfeed uh, style pen. And I do have two of the classic, which is normal, and one with overfeed that I will show. All right, so let me get into it. Starting with the basic pen, actually, let me get a classic as well, just for comparing. So there are some uh, similarities and differences between them. Both pens can be used as an eye dropper. The difference is that uh, the basic can only be used as an eye dropper and as such it's a little bit cheaper. However, you do have the options to pretty much use every nib selections that the classic will have as well. The classic uh, also has like a cartridge or converter type thing that you can have inside and that basically will in theory help you with uh, the burping issues basically it will uh, isolate the the ink from the barrel so this way the temperature uh, your hand won't warm up the air and push the ink and this way it will burp um, now one difference that I don't like about uh, the basic is that the basic is a little bit slimmer than uh, the classic. And that, from my experience, created some issues with the ink flow. And as such, personally, I actually had to add a bowl inside of it to make sure that it will break the surface tension and I won't have ink stuck at the top of the pen while I'm trying to draw or... Um, or basically right. Uh, on this pen, I have changed the G nib that it came with, which was a Zebra G nib. I changed it with a titanium coated version just because they last longer. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, the pen in essence is very similar with the other one. And like I said, it's just uh, slimmer. And as such, the cup the, the cap doesn't sit as well and it feels like you can actually uh, over torque it and probably ruin those threads. So if you use this, just go until you feel it's a little bit tight and that's it, you can stop. The cap is very simple in design as you can see, nothing complicated about it, with a very good clip actually if you like clips and also removable. The only problem is if you remove it, it kind of ruins a little bit the aesthetic of the pen and uh, I don't I don't like it as much I mean it would be nice if you have a version uh, without a cap I would like that since I prefer no cap I mean no uh, no clips but it's okay this is very easy to use very easy to remove if needed and so on and as you noticed a little bit earlier the cap does have a, has a breather hole in there the other cap for the class is pretty much the same. The only thing is it sits much better on the body because it's a little bit wider and you don't have the issue of actually over torquing this. It, it stops, it butts, the cap stops nicely right on that uh, middle ring in there and uh, it feels better built basically. It feels like you won't over torque that, uh, the cap by mistake and ruining the threads will be a little bit harder. Both bodies are made of some interesting material. I don't know what it is. Um, and I don't remember seeing anything on their website uh, about the material that it use, it's using. Nevertheless, it feels like plastic, but it's a very pleasant plastic. It's not very soft. It's not very harsh. It's, 
It, it kind of reminds me of the old school fountain pens, black fountain pens, and I, it's hard to describe. Anyway, nevertheless, the material for me at least is very nice. And on the classic, I really like the fact that it has this uh, gnarly ring that helps you with removing it from the cap and at the same time, oops, it helps you remove the barrel as needed. Now, this pen, basically, this is the basic, uh, like I said, doesn't have anything in there, its body is much slimmer, and as such, I have to add like a little ball inside of it, something like this, which I'll put it in when I'll get to inking this pen. To ink this pen, you have to remove the nib and the feed, and then using something like uh, a pump, uh, a pump or a syringe, you fill it up with ink and just fill it up as much as you can, all the way to the top uh, where the before the feed and nib uh, uh, ends inside the pan, and then you put your feed and your nib back in, and you're good to go. So this one is fairly simple, but keep in mind, you will need one of these, especially depending on the ink that you use. Um, now with this pen, things are a little bit different, right? I mean, it has the same uh, drip section and the same style feed and uh, I mean, nib, your choice of nib or whatever you want. And if you open this, you also have the option to use these. So these are reusable cartridges and they're very odd in their own way because this basically you fill it with ink. Um, they want to be very similar with what you have on uh, a technical pen basically. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is that this is supposed to be friction fit against the outside walls of the section. It doesn't actually go on over um, the section like a nipple and then you force it in and unfortunately one of the negative uh, things about this pen is that these things are not either these things are not built the same or the machining on these things are not the same because this it feels very loose and this will basically allow a lot of air leakage now there is like a lip inside this uh, bar barrel, hard to show it, but I guess, trust me, it's there. I was looking to see if I have anything in here. Hey, let me see, give me a second. Uh, yeah, there, you kind of see it. There is an, basically an edge right there. And that edge is supposed to, it doesn't focus on it, but you can kind of have an idea. Uh, it's supposed to push on the top of this converter down. Sorry about that, that was my computer. Anyway, so, but the problem with these, these are plastic, right? So it's hard to have a perfect surface there. It's hard to have a, perf a perfect surface here that seals properly even if you just push on it, right? Just even less than a millimeter good gap and the ink will start flowing or your your feed will over start overflow with ink, which is not bad, not, not good. So ideally you always have to silicone grease this side. So I don't think it's the best design idea. I think going by what technical pens are, where you put this on top or something and it's tight against it, would have been probably a better option, but unfortunately it is what it is. Because of that, however, I don't really use these. I keep them in the pen so I don't lose them, but when I actually ink them, I use them as an eyedropper. And this is why I like the classic better because you can use it as an eyedropper as well and it has more ink capacity and you don't need a ball inside because you have a lot more space, it's wider, ink will never really stick to the sides of the, of the, pa of the barrel and you always flow down. The thing with this, you still have to use uh, 
uh, basically uh, silicon grease. You have to silicon grease the threads. And while you do not have an O-ring for this, this will sit actually very securely. And I never had any issue. Uh, just tight it. And this won't budge at all. You actually have to put a little bit of force to remove it. So if you buy the classic, my recommendation will be don't use this unless yours will be better, but eventually most probably will work down anyway. So you still have an uh, issue with the, uh, with the air leaks. Um, and as you can see, that's the inside of the section. And again, you can just remove the, the nib very easily and you can remove the nib just as easily. Uh, I mean the feed just as easily. Now with this type of feed and this uh, section, I noticed that there are some issues. I don't know if machining the section or machining the feeds, but the fitment is slightly different. Like this in here, it's a little bit tight and then it kind of loose and works fine. But then for example, if I go back to the classic that I have, the feed will, I mean, the knee will be removed easily, but the feed, it's actually really stuck in there. So <laughs> I actually have to use one of these to remove the feed. And as you can see, it's a little bit of work. So one of the negatives that I see is that the machining, either with the nibs or the feeds, it's slightly different. So there's not a, there's no consistency in it. Uh, I believe that the basing, this one that I have, because it, uh, the higher tolerances, not the lower tolerances, the feed sits much better inside there and seals much better. With some um, of the sections uh, on these pens and the feeds being looser, I feel like the ink kind of starts uh, overflowing on the feed and um, actually starts dripping sometimes, which is... A little bit of a nuisance, but I you kind of have to find the right spot. So that's one of the negatives on this pens that I have found. However, it's not a big negative that I think it's something that uh, I would overlook because of the benefits that you actually have using these pens. These pens. So, what are the benefits of using this pen? Honestly, one of the biggest benefits is that, well, you can actually use Zebra Genemes and they're very easy to replace and use. And at the same time, this pens allows you, because of their design and the fit design and uh, how they work, they allow you to use India ink and acrylic ink. And that's something very hard to overlook, especially if you're a big fan of EDI inks. In a fountain pen, it's it's beautiful. I love it. And this is why these are one of my favorite pens, because I can use India and acrylic inks. The other pen that I wanted to show you, I'll put this aside for now. It's still the classic one, but this is what they call an overfeed. So basically, you have exactly very similar body. It's a little bit slightly different than the gnarly part is very, uh, slightly different, but the design of the pen is the same thing. You still use one of these. On this pen, for whatever reason, it's actually tighter, which is good. And I think this will work very well on this pen, but if, for whatever reason, it doesn't work that well on the classic one. Uh, however, the issue with this and the... Well, well I... How should I explain this? So the point of this overfeed is that basically when you flex the nib, the nib is not in contact with your feed anymore. So there is a chance that um, you're going to lose uh, ink feed that way. However, the point of the overfeed is to help with that. So basically the nib is being fed by the feed and the overfeed. And if the nib uh, loses contact with the feed and is not being uh, fed with ink anymore, the overfeed takes over and you will deliver ink 
on top of the, the nib. I've used overfills uh, before in pens uh, and overfills that I built actually. The problem with this overfit, however, is that it's very stiff. Basically, it's really stiff. This is supposed to be very flexible, very thin, and you shouldn't put barely any effort in flexing this. I'm actually pushing fairly hard. I'm pushing harder than I would have to in order to flex a genie. So basically the issue is that if you're trying to use uh, an overfit of this pen, you won't be able to flex that genie properly. As such, I never really used this pen more than once. I'm still trying to figure out how to make that overfit works. The problem is I can't just remove the, I mean, there is options to remove the overfit and uh, have a spacer instead in there and just use the pen as is. Unfortunately, they were out of spacers, so I couldn't buy one and just not use it. So that's one of the pens that I probably wouldn't recommend you to buy it just because that overfit from my experience doesn't seem to work. So off screen, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually fill up uh, the uh, basic fountain pen that I have with uh, the Bombay Sepia India ink. And um, I'm gonna come back to do a small writing demonstration just to show the, um, well, what this pen can do with uh, with ink and how flowy it is. I'm not sure if today I'm gonna do any sketches. I might do some sketches off screen and just insert them in the conclusions. I'll stop rambling, I'll uh, fill it up and I'm gonna come back with a writing example. All right, I am back. I just feel finished fin uh, filling up the, the pen. Now my space on this desk right now with all the lights around me, it's very reduced, but this is a Muji um, notebook and I'll be using it in the past for testing and for, well, playing around with the uh, flex nibs. I used it quite a lot, so this actual pen here. Sorry about my hands, I got a little bit dirty while I was uh, eye dropping this thing. One of the things where I'm mentioning it's not ideal to use it as uh, as a beginner's uh, pen. Anyway, so just to do a quick writing sample, uh, let me see if I got ink in the in the nib. Oh, there you go. It's coming out. As you can see, it's already flowing. Takes a little bit to get it started, but once it starts going, As I was saying, the ink flows too well. I'm actually having issues writing uh, letters too small. So for this kind of pen, you want to go with things that are a little bit bigger. So let's say I'm going to write something else.
flows very well. No skipping. Actually, it's overflowing, to be honest. And I'm going to try. Oops. Just I was praising it. Started skipping. Hold on a second. I had a napkin again. Yeah, I had some debris and I need that so it wasn't working. So how much you can go, let's see. Sorry, I went off screen in there because well this notebook is quite large, but lines from top to bottom. Okay, let me try and do it this way. Ah. <laughs> now that's well behaved and good flowing flex nib. And still wet, I touched it with my fingers. I'm a little bit messy, I apologize for that. What else should I uh, say? Okay, so. Again, I apologize. I'm not. Uh, big on calli calligraphy i just write whatever i feel like i <laughs> like i can nothing too special just my sort of a normal writing let's see this is a song that i liked and i enjoyed uh, listening to especially today it's been ringing in my head Not bad. <laughs> I mean, I, can you? I mean, I can only imagine what somebody that uh, is more versed in calligraphy can actually do with this fountain pen. And the issue with this pen, especially for me at least, it's uh, when I'm trying to write uh, smaller. the ink flows so well that it's hard to make uh, small letters because they're just gonna overlap and overflow the smaller lines <laughs> that's gonna take a while to to
basically dry. Not bad. Honestly, I think you could flex this nib until your auto ink. I love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, uh, now you understand my excitement about this pen. Now, yes, he has a big issue with ink flow. That's why it's very hard to actually do small details. Because if you start doing this for too long of a time, you're actually going to have ink... Oh, I'm off screen. Sorry. So if you start doing this for too long, just small strokes, eventually the ink will start to actually bubble up right under the nib. And... Uh, it will be annoying. So if you do any sketches, these, uh, this pen I usually use them just for loose sketches, nothing too wild, just ideas or just doing things on the page without thinking much or nothing um, too, too final, more like, you know, planning, sketching in, in the actual sense of uh, of sketching. Anyway, so this is the um, <laughs> the text sample. I'll try and do a quick sketch if I'll have the time and if the video is not too long I'll include it here. If not I'm just gonna come back with the actual um, conclusions. Alright, see you soon. Okay, I am back. Um, like I promised, this was a very quick one. Uh, I did a small one in here, like a sort of a floating city in the sky. And um, just having some fun, nothing too special. Just trying some ideas for, for the future. But you can kind of get an idea of um, how you could use this for sketching. Like, it doesn't have to be extremely detailed. Uh, because if you go too much in detail and you um, do very fine lines, you're going to end up with blobs on the page because unfortunately it overflows and I don't know how to fix that. If you have an idea, let me know. I know that they do have feeds for um, basically um, slow, medium and high flow. I tried all three of them it flows exactly the same. I don't know because it's the issue with the feeds and not being a perfect fit all the time and maybe not sealing properly. 
I don't know the issue, but if overflows constantly. So, um, what I really like about these pants, first of all, they are well balanced. Um, they feel great in the hand. The body is nice. Maybe the basic it's a little bit too slim, but it's not too bad either. I like that they post, especially if you need to. I like that these uh, clips are removable, even though maybe the design will look a little bit broken if you remove the, the clips. What, uh, what else do I like about it? What I like about it is, well, I can, I can use India ink, which is one of my favorite inks. And uh, that for me is a huge, huge bonus. Uh, another thing that I like about it is nibs are easy to change. As you've seen, you just literally pull them up, pull them in, and you're good to go. So let's say if you're in the middle of something and you have an uh, older uh, nib that for whatever reason bent, because, well, it was time for it to be replaced, you literally just pull it out, put another one in, and off you go. The only downside is <laughs> you can easily get... Uh, dirty and if you're not comfortable with that you're probably not gonna like these pants um, the other thing is the eyedropper so you can push put a lot of ink in them uh, basic it is the issue with you need to add that ball inside of it because they're a little bit thinner and i did had issues with the ink flow but once you have that blow or that uh, ball in there to break the surface tension you'll have no issues at least i have no issues and uh, that's about uh, for positive. Um, what is negative about this? What I don't like about it that much and it would be nice to be improved. Like I already mentioned, the feeds and their flows. I don't see the difference. They're all flowing exactly the same, using exactly the same ink, and they overflow. And um, that can be an issue for um, smaller, uh, more detailed drawings. I don't know if people at uh, Ackerman will hear me out, but I hope maybe you can shed some light on that, or maybe you can revise the feeds and help us out with better flow. <laughs> um, another kind of a big thing is there's not a consistent build quality. I mean, trying to use the same feed in a different pen that in theory should have exactly the same opening in the sections for it. For some of them fits uh, tighter, for some of them fits uh, looser. And even if I use the same section and bring in another feed, even the there's differences between feeds. Some are, they're not all finished consistently. And that is a little bit annoying. Um, the other annoying thing is are these these things. I don't think they work as they should. A better design would be to use something as they have on the actual uh, uh, technical pens. This stuff, this will work very well. It's tight and it basically mounts on, not in. And it has that metal band to help uh, keep it tighter. And this is a great idea. I wish maybe we'll have something similar on this, maybe an improved version. That will help with this actually working. What else? Um, the overfit. Oh, yes, the overfit. Um, I really wanted that thing to like and I really wanted to, to use it, but that overfit it's way too steep um, if by any chance this were built so you can modify them as you want and then basically uh, slim them down until you make them very flexible okay maybe I didn't know that and I'll try and do that but as they are they don't really work and one final improvement that I would definitely recommend if by any chance is possible with India ink especially if you leave the pen for a longer period of that time, eventually that ink will dry it out. It's just the nature of this beast, especially since you do have a breather hole and there's air coming into the pen. So one thing that I have done, so what I did, I made like this tiny sponge thing that I added it in the cap right there. 
and I just push that all the way down and from time to time I drop just like a I drop I put a drop of water in there to keep my knee uh, need moist and that tiny sponge lasts me for at least a week until it starts to dry out so every time I opening this and start writing or drawing it writes right away so maybe one recommendation would be design a new cap that it's maybe a little bit uh, higher and then make this to be uh, to, so you're able to actually uh, uh, basically put threads on it so you can actually open it have the sponge in the end put water in it and then uh, put this back in great example that i love how it is on these technical technical pens they basically have a sort of a sponge in there and you can actually open this cap and you put water in there it's absorbed by the sponge you put this back in and they keep your nibs uh, nice wet and I never had issues with ink drying with these pens. Uh, these are one of my favorite technical pens. Improve the consistency of the machining of these things because even by having classic versus classic pens, I can't just fit parts from one to another and fit the same. Some fit looser, some fit tighter, even though it's exactly the same part. Bottom line is I want to say that these are definitely one of my favorite pens and I hope you understand why I would say wow you can do really cool stuff with this thing and you can flex and you can flow and you can write without much of a, not much of an issue there are some improvements that will be nice. I would gladly pay, honestly, twice the price if it will be consistent and if you will have all the upgrades that I just mentioned, right? Because this is a cool setup and it has a lot of potential. I do like these pens a lot. I'll be honest with you, I keep them separate from everything else. These are sitting on my desk. And I always at least one pen, it's always inked. Anyway, so not to keep it any longer, thank you very kindly for uh, joining. And uh, if you actually forced through the entire video, I really appreciate that. That definitely helps me a lot. And if you have any questions, please do leave them below and I will try and answer them. Thank you again for joining me. Uh, I wish you all the best and a good day or a good night wherever you are and uh, thanks. <laughs> Take care. Bye.